Okay, hi everybody. Hey, hi. So I'm trying to do this interview with Chance TV. Um, and I keep... Uh, why am I hearing music in my headphones? This is nuts. Alright, one second, you guys. Okay, you guys can hear me. I just, I just can't. Ah, there we go. Hi. It's on now, beautiful. There we go. We're it gonna do something. I don't know what. It took us a minute. I hear you. Technologically challenged, but we made it. Hi, everybody. Hi. This is Chance TV, um, and we're going live on my Instagram. It wasn't our original plan today. Please introduce yourself so that everybody. My name is Chance you TV. Are. I'm Your Chance TV. <laughs> I, I interview superstars. Um, Uber models, the real models, not those Instagram Botox that, in, you know, famous for uh, posting stuff. Um, celebrities, other people, but this is all about you. So I don't care about me. First, I got like 9 million questions from Twitter followers that they want to know. Okay. Are you afraid of the dark? Afraid of heights? What are you afraid of? I'm not afraid of the dark. Um, I'm not really afraid of heights, but I have a very weird feeling every time... Um, I'm I'm at the edge of something really high where it's almost like I feel like um, there's a, there's like a jump rope going inside of my body that goes from from my feet to my scalp. Okay, I want to wail through all these real fast. Okay, when you were in your first high rise in New York, when you moved to New York, were you in a high level floor ever that you lived in? Um. I've never lived above the 33rd floor. Oh, wait. No, no, no. I've never lived above the 37th floor. Um, That's high. And, yeah, and it took me a long, long time to be able to afford something up that high. Of course, affording that high is a lot. But when you looked out the window the first time, did you have that, there's a two-inch mirror, a window between us, and then that's it? Because I did. I was terrified. I didn't really have that feeling. Um I didn't really have that feeling in that place um, because there was a lot of water outside of the window. Cushion, a nice cushion. Okay. Yes. In yes. your mind, you're like, I'll just do a swan dive. Okay. Other exactly. things. Um, did you ever intimidate men intentionally? I'm not asking. The world is asking. Um, no, unless it was in business. That's right. You're a sharp woman. Um, you pretty much are all business. You love your family, but outside of the family, you're not just some supermodel. Tell us some of the stuff, because that, that question uh, came about what you're doing and what you have done. Let's see. Well, um, one of the great things about modeling is that it's a great way to get into any other business that you want to be in. And my mother advised me very early on when I left college and started modeling. She's like, you don't have a safety net. You don't have a pension. You don't have benefits. So um, the first thing you need to do when you get your first paycheck is start a 401k and then get yourself some health insurance. So I did that back when I was 19. So anybody who's starting any kind of business or anybody who has like even like a little extra money now after they got their PPP or whatever, um, try to start yourself a 401k. I can't thank my mom enough for that advice. Um, and over the years, you know, I've written for a lot of different publications from um, interview to Time Magazine to the New York Times, the London Sunday Times, Essence, L, Vogue. I mean, you name it. Um, and that's always helped me to continually evolve my career. So when I was turned 50 five years ago, um, what? almost five years ago, yeah, almost five years ago, I started a blog called webonthefly.com. And my motto is own your age, own your beauty, own your power. Because one of the things that we experience a lot in the fashion industry is ageism. And, um, you know, there, there's not a lot of information or images of women who are older than 40. And we're in, 
you know, we're at the height of our powers. We're in the prime of our life. Um, we have plenty of money to spend on clothes and beauty and, um, you know, the time also to enjoy our lives. So that's, that's really what my blog is about. Right. You guys at that age are a tremendous asset. You have the experience, the worldliness, you've been through it all, you've achieved things, you've got a bank account, and the wisdom to make things happen and change. Um, that was another thing. Is America going to survive between corona and racism? I don't think things are looking too good. You know... I am a patriot. I love our country. I believe that we have incredible ideals. I think that Americans are incredible people. I love that we live in a nation of people who come from all over the world. And, you know, more or less, we, um, we get along. We're tolerant. We're open-minded. Um, you know, I was born in 1965, and that was the year that um, black people became full citizens in this country, where we, where, where we were all given the vote. So, you know, it's not that long ago, because, like, I can still fit into the same bikini that half of these girls who are on Instagram, you know, who are brand new influencers are wearing. So think about, like, in that short amount of time, how far we've come. We've got a lot of problems in terms of... Um, understanding and equality, but also we have all the tools we really do because we have a system that that we can make work for us to change things. Now, as far as Corona, um, two members of my family are, are, are frontline healthcare workers. When my sister first started practicing medicine, um, she was treating patients in the AIDS epidemic with no mask and no gloves. And you see how far we've come in terms of the treatment of AIDS um, and HIV. So I think one of the most amazing things now is because of the internet and because of science, um, we're really, really, really moving fast in terms of um, curing Corona with science. I, I'm, I'm an optimist, you know, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm an optimist, I'm a parent. So I always believe in the best of humanity. I always try to dig for the best of myself and like have, and, and have my kids also dig for the best of themselves. So I think we're gonna be all right, I really do. You made me feel a lot better. I'm feeling good now. I do like <laughs> what you said because I have a quote, modeling was to facilitate all other things that you wanted to do. And that, that's brilliant because so many people, they get in and they think, oh, I'll have 30 years. Uh, sometimes, you know, all of a sudden grunge comes along. You don't fit the look. You've got no castings. You're out of work. So that, that uh, 501c3 is brilliant. No, no. Um, 401k. A 501c3 401k. Is a Sorry, 401k. Yeah. So, um, you know, mo well, modeling wasn't just to facilitate everything else I wanted to do. It was like my dream career. I, I always loved fashion and travel and pictures and magazines and wanted to be a model like so, so, so badly. Uh, my mom wouldn't let me start till I was 19 because she was like I needed to have a good base in my education and also not be living off of my looks when I was, you know, not even old enough to understand who I was as a person yet. Um, but the thing about modeling is that it helps you do everything else that you want to do. Fashion is an amazing, exciting career, and it's given me so much. Um, you know, for all the people who gave me a chance, Isaac Mizrahi, Carl Lagerfeld, Azadine Alaya, Anna Wintour, Andre Leon Talley. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. You know, Revlon. Um, yep, Revlon. You know, just great photographers like Stephen Mizell and our dear departed Stephen Lindbergh, uh, Peter Lindbergh and um, Arthur Elgort. I mean, there's so many people who I, I could name who helped me get started. And, um, you know, what, when you said like, you know, most people don't have a long career. It's true. Most people work like three to five years. They, they make some money. They get a good head start. They meet some people and they get some pictures. And that's that's your average modeling career. Um, I don't know why, you know, I've stayed so long. I think it's because I love it. Um, and I think because, um, my mom just gave me a really great appreciation of fashion, beauty, and also hard work. 
Right. I think the thing that's most important is uh, I've interviewed some people and they become Miss America, Miss USA, or a model that's up and coming. And I try mm -hmm. to talk about their plans, and everything is about Instagram and the filters they're using. It's not that long term, it's very short sighted. And it has to be a stepping stone, even if it's a long term career, that's great. But you have to assume it might not be. And this is a, a, a a launch pad to, like you said, other things. Get the 401k, get yourself going, do something, create something. Um, was but I think, point you know, also that goes, that, that goes for all businesses because, I mean, um, th things are so in flux. Our economy is changing so fast. Everybody needs to learn how to learn so that, you know, you can get another job, a side hustle, a new job because it's nuts out here. It's, we're at a point... Um, Right out of college, I moved to Hong Kong. My father sent me there like your mother did for you. And he said, go learn finance. Forget business school. And I learned a little. We have 40 million plus unemployment. But the problem is not that, oh, it's lessened each month. I mean, each week to a million, a million five. The people who are unemployed, it's staying flat, which means no job creation. That's the problem. It's not how many people say, hey, I'm unemployed this month. It's how many people say, I got a job this month. And there's nobody. And then the coronavirus and then the global thing and this and people killing people because they're arresting them over a cigarette or, or, or whatever they're doing. Whatever. I, I'm still optimistic about what you said. Quick things because I'm just – people are sending me okay. questions and people like crazy. Sure. Um, do you remember your first kiss? Uh, God knows yes. that guy can No, you know, my, my, mother ma my mother made me this teddy bear – that I wanted so badly. I picked out the pattern um, and my mom made it for me when I was five and I remember kissing that teddy bear because I was so in love with it. That is the nicest story I've ever heard. I thought it would be like the captain of the football team or something like that. Okay. No, his you, name was Mr. Bear and he's been passed down through, he's, he's, he's on his second generation, almost his third generation being passed down through the family now. <laughs> That's so nice. So yeah. grandma, eventually you will be passing it down to the uh, second, third generation. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. For, what a lucky, lucky bear. Do you remember your first heartbreak or breakup that really hit you when you were younger? You know, um, I had a lot of early training in ballet. And um, I really, really, really wanted to be a ballerina. I really like saw myself as, you know, that I would grow up one day and I would be like a Misty Copeland. And then I realized that I just, you know, I didn't, I had started too late. I really didn't have the right body. It wasn't, it wasn't in the stars for me. And that was my, that was my first real big heartbreak. Okay. I thought it was going to be some guy and whatever, but ballet. All right. So Barishnikov never made it to your door. I understand. Um, you, okay, we talked about intimidating guys only in business, which is fantastic, and you should use that. Um, but did you ever have an awkward period when you were younger? Where, where oh, my Veronica God. Adolescence, like Veronica? adolescence is completely awkward. You know, like one day, you know, your jeans fit. The next day, they don't. One day, your face is like bright red on one side. The next day, that's fine. But then there's, but then there's pimples on the other side. Um your hair changes like crazy because of your hormones. You don't know, you know, you don't know how to do your hair. You don't know how to do your makeup. And that's one of the great things about modeling. And also I think now the internet is that it really teaches you how to like capture and control your beauty and your health. Um, and it, it was like a long journey for me also because I really feel like um, you have to, you have to, you have to really focus on your health and you have to really focus on your strength in order to find your beauty. And if you're focusing on what you think you just look like outside first, but you don't work from the inside out, it's never going to work. I agree with you. Absolutely. And that's the toughest challenge. Your, your greatest opponent is always yourself. That's it. Um, oh, so I, nice just, I just saw someone say I, I didn't catch the lady's name she said um, I, I still feel like I don't know how to how to handle my beauty and um, 
my great, great, great friend, Azadine Laya, the designer, once said to me, anybody can become beautiful at any time. Sometimes it's just a question of a haircut. Sometimes it's just a question of finding the right kind of dress for you. So no matter how you feel today, remember t tomorrow's, tomorrow's another day, you know, and your beauty's always there. You just have to find it. I love that. That's beautiful. And you, you spent a lot of time with her. Didn't you live with her for a little while? Oh, um, yes. Azadine and Kristoff, um, they're a couple. As Azadine and Laya, um, he passed away three years ago now. Um, he was from Tunisia, and he was one of the best designers that the 20th century or Paris has ever seen. Oh, wow. Well, that's talking about uh, being in the right place and absorbing all the uh, right information. Uh, when did the skin, because you love your skin, you're known for your skin, when did that finally settle in? Was it late twenties, early twenties? Um, I would say like like mid twenties. You know, I had like so many, you know, so many little things that people have with their skin. You know, and even now, like you know, women's bodies they just they change so much. You know, that we have these marvelous machines that, like, you know, every thirty days we change and we can make people and. Our, yeah. And our skin changes along with that, you know, so there's like a lot of tips and tricks and stuff you can read on my blog for just certain changes that are happening to me in, in this period of my life, you know, being you know, in my 50s, menopausal, it changes your skin and we just evolve. So you have to learn how to take care of it at every phase. Right. And that's web on the fly. I've seen a lot of your yep. videos, a lot of funny stuff, too. You're not messing around. When you're doing yoga, you have like whatever those <laughs> fur, I don't, I, wigs on. People just have to see it. There's no way to explain it. Dancing in the kitchen in all bright orange. It's, it's uh -huh. a fun site. It's a really good site. When did you come up with that? Was that the thing of I've hit a certain point in my life and now I like to give some knowledge back? Yeah, you know, and also there was just, there was just a point where, and I think this happens to a lot of women, um, we leave our jobs to go have children and then we come back and, you know, we've lost ground professionally. And then to be in a display profession and we live in a society that doesn't really honor or respect age so much, it was very, very, very difficult for me to get started again. And so I came up, you have a dog? Yes, there's some rescue animals floating around here. So <laughs> something comes across the table. Don't worry, I'm okay. No, all good. Um, so I, so I wanted to put, you know, I wanted to put a destination together with webonthefly.com because even like, and it's not just for women who are 40 or 50 or beyond. It's not just about our beauty, but also in the fashion industry, like women at 18, they start to fear turning 21. And then at 21, they fear turning 25 and then they fear turning 30. Um, so I wanted, I wanted to talk about like owning your age, right? So whatever age you are, this is, this is the best you're ever going to be right now. Right. So, and you know, owning your power because with age comes wisdom. So, you know, own your age, own your beauty, own your power. That's my advice to women and everyone, really. I think it's, I think it's universal. Right. And it applies any age, really, like you're saying. Don't be fretting at 19 that 21's around the corner. Nothing you can do, just own it. Um, there's so many things you did. I just want to jump through these. Do you miss uh, being a correspondent? I mean, you, you, Fox, HBO, Good Morning America. I mean, that's not lightweight stuff. That's top-of-the-line corresponding. You know, um, it's always fun to do stuff like that. I would I would do it again in a heartbeat, but ev but every phase of life, you know, has its has it has its um its flavor and 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 what's right for that time of the you know and what and what's right for that time of your life. The other thing about blogging that I like so much is that I can be available for my family. I can, and I can I can work when my kids are working. Perfect. I can work and my kids are working. So it gives me a lot of flexibility. It's allowed me to build my, my life, my job around my life rather than my life around my job. That should be one of those memes that everybody's shooting around. That's really good stuff. Of course, now I have to ask, um, 
haven't acted in a while, but when you did act, you did some major stuff. What what I I'm looking at stuff here. Uh, Jungle Fever, Malcolm X, Zoolander, Fifty Four. You you really were an actor. I mean, how about that? How did that come to be? Was that a childhood fantasy? And then someone said, "Hey." I was in every school play. I was in every school oh play. I had the lead in a couple school plays. Um, you know, and then you get so much exposure from modeling that, you know, people ask you to do all kinds of, you know, people ask you to do all kinds of different things. So um, that was a lot of fun, I have to say. But writing, you know, writing and, and talking about the world from my point of view has always been my passion. Yeah, I'm starting to see that trend here that the giving back and guiding and helping everyone at any age seems to be really what's perfect for you. Um, we're very lucky that you're doing that. Uh, any advice for just any young kids right now, let's say if they're listening somehow, really young kids who are being homeschooled because they go outside, they have a mask, they can't be with their friends, and they're 24-7 with their family. Any words for the young ones? Every generation has its challenges. Um, you know, just just look at this as how can you learn to adapt? And think about the things that you have that um, really work for you and the things that you don't have that, that, that are really needed. And now more than ever, like understanding and mastering technology rather than being a slave to it is probably one of the most important things that you can do. And P.S., help your parents help your parents, right? Like help them work the remote control, anything that has a motherboard in it, um, <laughs> you know, from, <laughs> from the stove to the microwave to the refrigerator. Help them work that stuff. That's, that's hysterical. The motherboard comment, that, that wins it. That's <laughs> the weak that comment. Now, how about for the parents? Because I have a lot of friends who have their kids and they're drinking more. They're cursing on the phone more the than kids ever. Or the, when parents. the parents. Uh huh. Yeah, the parents, they're like drinking all the time. I speak with them. They're cursing. They're very pent up. I try to help them, but I can't relate. I have, I have pets and, and that's it. Well, Any words it, for those people? Well, you know, whenever, when, you know, whenever you live with people, they kind of, it's, it's normal that, you know, people can get on your nerves a little bit. So just agree to disagree. Um, and there's nothing wrong with going in another room saying, Hey, I need like 10 minutes to go into the other room. I'll be back. Um, I like that. That's good. Mm -hmm. Like my time. Sorry, we live together. I'm going to go hide in this room for two hours. Just let me watch my show and things will be better. Yeah. You know, like lots of times one person in the family will say, listen, everything's really bothering me right now. I'm, I'm going, I'm, I'm going in another room for an hour. I do that too. Um, my room is the bathroom because that's like a room you don't bother anyone in. So I've, I've gone in there a few times for extended periods, got on the floor in the bathtub, red, seems crazy, but I come out better. So I like your isolation, isolation ideal. That's smart advice. That is good stuff. There's, there's, no taking that should be done. Um, if somebody had to play you in a, oh, go ahead. I see your mouth doing. No, I was going to say, um, because I'm, I'm going to run, run out of power soon. So just, I'm, I'm, I'm at 10%. So. Okay. Just be mindful. Okay. Aware. When you disappear, okay. you disappear. Oh, but yes. you know what? I want to make sure that when you, I don't want to go to the end because you have to save this to IGTV or it's lost and then I can't okay. use it. So let's stop at like 4% or something. Real okay. quick, who, who yes. would play you in a movie? Who would play you in a movie? Misty Copeland. Perfect, perfect. Okay. I'm just going to go right down here. Um, so Misty you, would be young me, and then Gugu Mabatha Ra would be old me. You have that very figured out. Not old me, but, I'm like, proud. but, but like 30s me. 30, she, she, she could be 30s to 40s me. Okay, there is. I don't think anybody could be you, but they sound really good. Um, craziest thing you've nice been asked to do modeling. Someone asked me to say, craziest thing you've been asked to do in modeling. Hangover barbed wire fence. Uh, oh, you know what? Actually, I'm, that, that, um, I had to uh, 
hang all of the 50th floor window of the French building on Fifth Avenue on a wire? No. <laughs> just no. <laughs> I, I just, I'd be afraid watching you. You did that? That's I did that. I did that. Stuff. I actually have an official stunt woman's patch. Well, you should have it. That is a, uh -huh. that is slow. When was that? How long ago was that? And who put you That's up to that? A, um, I, that? That was something that I did with Orbe, um, another, another great friend of ours, the incredible hairdresser Orbe. And, um, it, and the photographer was Todd Everly. And it was for, um, I think, French Vogue. Oh, I'm going to find that, even if I have to go to the libraries in France. Okay. Oh, that's incredible. Um, it's ever been rejected? All day, every day. Are you kidding? No, I don't mean um, by business-wise, by a gentleman. Not in business. That's different. You know, who hasn't? Rejection is part of life. You know, you just, you just learn to handle it. I think that's good advice. Oh, God. Okay, let's... What, we can always do this another time. What, what would you like people to take from this or think of you when they hear your name? Um, let's see. Right now, I just want people to think like, you know, organize, educate, and be tolerant. Beautiful. And your sites? Just so people can go to your um, websites? Well, it's uh, webonthefly.com and at Veronica Webb, but I guess people are here. <laughs> Yes, they're already here. If you could just say your name and then they say supermodel, supermom, and you're watching Chance TV, that would be perfect. Hey, what's up, Veronica Webb, supermodel, and some people kindly call me a supermom, and you're watching Chance TV. Thank you so much. I'll send you an email after this. Go save it. Definitely save it. I'm so happy I got to meet you. You're everything I hope you'd be. All right. Take care, Miss Veronica. Bye-bye.